Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to build a Markdown editor using React.js and a package called Remarkable. So this is the demo of the application. You can place in images, you can place in links, you can place in headers, you can place in lines of code or a block of code. Now I should mention that the reason why even though this is a header, the reason why it appears small is because I used Tailwind CSS and as you know Tailwind resets some of the stylings which I did not get when I was building this, so I'm going to correct it in this video. And this is a link as well, but it doesn't appear as a link. We are going to correct that in this video. So if you want the link to the repository, you can check the description or you can head over to my GitHub. The repository is called React.js Markdown Editor. Now, if you go into the React.js website and scroll to the bottom of the homepage, you will find this component right here. So basically, this is what we're going to do, only that we're not going to use class components we're going to convert this into a function component and that's what we're going to build in this video. So let's get started. I'm going to open up my terminal and then cd into my desktop and into my work folder and then I'm going to create a new React application. So npx create React app and I'm going to call this markdown editor. Okay, so now that this has finished, what I'm going to do is cd into this newly created folder called markdown editor. And then I'm going to open Visual Studio Code into that folder, like so. And then I'm going to start my dev server from my terminal. I'm going to say npm start. Okay, just going to shrink this down. Just shrink it down. Okay. Now inside here, I'm going to open up my VS Code terminal using Control and J. If it works. Come on. Okay. So Control and J, and this has already opened up. Fantastic. So I'm going to say um, npm install remark a bone. So this is the package that we're going to use. So I'm going to let this install. And then I'm going to go into my app.js. So inside app.js, we're going to perform a bit of cleanup. So I'm going to remove this header inside here. And then I'm going to grab this and just remove it. And then at the top, I'm going to import use state from react okay and then i'm going to import um what's it called remarkable and this is coming from remarkable hasn't it installed what's happening okay so here it is okay so import remarkable from remarkable and then i'm going to initialize this okay so i'm going to say const md equals to new remarkable like so okay now inside here let me just remove this and i don't know why this is giving me an error it shouldn't so just say export default default function up and then let's set up our state values and we're just going to need one so i'm just going to say const text and set text this is equal to use state by default is going to be an empty string now this is what is going to be populated this is what let me show you when you look right inside here, this is what is going to be changing every time that we type something in. Okay, so we're going to be accessing that value and then displaying it right inside here. Okay, so inside here, let's return a main, a main element. Okay, and then let's return an h1 that says markdown editor, like so. And then below this h1, let's have an article, article that says, um, sorry, that has a label label okay the label this is going to be html or this is going to be markdown markdown okay what am i doing below this let's have a text area text area with the name of text area let's just copy this here with an idea of text area uh, sorry with an idea of markdown because this html4 uh, references this text area so it needs to have the id that is the same for this html4 so let's say markdown with 30 columns 10 rows that's fantastic okay let's have an attribute here called required and let's say placeholder is going to be type in some markdown like so and then below this okay so below this let's say let's have an h3 that says this is the output right the output for this and then inside here we're going to have a div 
we are going to be styled. By the way, I think I'm just going to use Tailwind for this because it's much easier to style everything out. And then this is going to be our content that we type in inside here, okay? So let's head over into cdnjs. So cdnjs.com, of course. And then let's grab Tailwind CSS. So let's grab this link tag. And then let's go inside our public folder inside index.html. And then let's just paste this inside here. And then let's change this title to Markdown Editor. Okay, so let's save that and then let's close that. And then you know what, actually we can save this and see what we have on the screen. Let me place this to the side. Then let's have this right here. So this should be what we have, okay? This is what we have. So let's begin just styling it out a bit. Give this h1 a class name of text gray dash 900. Let's say text dash 4xl. Let's say text dash center. Move it to the center. Fantastic. Let's say font dash bold. Okay, and then let's go inside this main class. Give this a class name of padding all round of five. Okay, so that everything moves inwards. And then let's say that for medium screens, then the max width should be 4XL. And then for medium screens, let's reset the MX to auto, which will push everything to the center. And uh, I meant to save this. So everything, so what, what we expect is this should go to the center right there. So this is working correctly. So let's just tell this, uh, let's tell the, the input a bit, our text area actually. So below this, let's have a class name of BG white inside here. Let's have padding five. Let's have a rounded border with a slight box shadow on the input. And we are not going to really see anything because the background is also white. So let's fix that by going, and you know what, I don't actually, you know, let's go inside our index.css. Let's give our body a background color of, F1, 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 a very slight gray. And you know what, instead of, the, instead of the slight gray actually, what I can do is just grab a very slight blue right around here, very slight blue, and we can work with that, okay? And then let's see, let's go inside our text area, let's give this a class name of width that's full, which would go all the way to the end, fantastic. Now the label, I forgot the label should have, should have some text, let's just say type in some markdown like so so when you click this then it should automatically highlight our text area fantastic and then let's give this label a class name of margin top of three actually not margin top five margin bottom three if you can just reset i'm oh, sorry you know what? this should be a block element sorry for that it should be a block element that's why this margin doesn't apply okay so we're going to have this on the screen now what we need to start working on is getting the input from here and then displaying it at the bottom. So let's do that. Let's have a value prop to this. So the value for this is going to be the text, which basically means that whatever is typed inside here is going to be placed inside this state value. But the problem with this, if you only have the value, is that you are going to change this input input into a read-only input. So you're not going to be able to type anything inside. Okay. So in order to fix that, then we need to have an on change event handler. So I'm going to say on change, then let's access the event, the synthetic event of E, and then let's say set text into E dot target dot value. So basically what we're saying is that every time that we type something inside here, then we're going to access this function, uh, which will set whatever you type into, it's going to set it into our state value, which will populate this. So let me show you what I mean. Inside here, let's have, uh, let's display the text that we type in, right? let's save this and look at this look at that now when we type something inside here then it's going to display inside here as well but this is not what we want to do so let's remove this from here okay so the next thing that we need to do is just convert this text that we type in into markdown okay now we can do that let's just go inside this div and then let's say inside this div okay and then we're going to say dangerously set inner html okay and then inside here we're going to place our equal sign and then two curly brackets okay there are two curly brackets and then let's say underscore underscore html and then a full colon and then we're going to say md dot render and we want to render the text okay now this md dot render this method is coming from our remarkable package which we have at the top and which you have actually initialized that's why we have md here and this is md basically for markdown now let's save this okay and then let's be inside our index.css Let's say that for H1s, H2s, H3s, H4s, 
h5s and h6 uh, we're going to have a font weight come on font weight of bold okay and then for links so for anchor tags we're going to say the color for this should be blue and then text decoration should be underlined instead of none so underline okay so let's save this let's see what we have okay so let's test this out let's say um let's place a header that says header so we have basically this is working because this is an h1 in markdown so let's increase the size of the h1 so let's say for h1 let's say font size should be 36 pixels and then let's just copy this and not i should probably move it below this so copy this one two three four five and six okay change this to two change this to 32 change this to three change this to 28 change this to four come on and then change this to 24 change this to five change this to 20 change this to six change this to 16 okay so look at that now we have this as our header so i can say this is the let's say main header like so if i place an issue that say second header you can see that the font size reduces this is third header so three of them so third header if i can just get it correctly there we go third header and so on and so forth now if you, if we try to place a link let's see let's say click and then let's say here like so let's place a link to somewhere so youtube.com like so look at that now that it's a link then we have a color of blue with a text decoration of underline so that is working correctly and we have our markdown editor and i can place it uh, i can place in a code block so let's say what is npm install look at that we have npm install this is a code block right there so it, it just changes the font so that you can tell that it is actually a bit of code and you can place in code blocks by having three of the tilde marks right there so that's basically it all we have done is just convert this class component into a function component and it is working correctly and i hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new and see you in the next video bye bye mm -hmm.